welcome. AUs, alternate universes, are a staple of... Well, at least of Undertale, and- I'm not gonna lie to you. I was alive during 2015, and I was a loser. So, of course I have an unhealthy amount of knowledge on Undertale AUs. But most of that knowledge was gained through music. You could tell that I'm a real Undertale AU fan, because I only know of SoundCloud through AU music. However, Deltarune has a dramatically different landscape. Its AU repertoire is small and rapidly shrinking compared to Undertale. I mean, obviously. Deltarune's not a finished game yet, nor even close. So AUs aren't nearly as prevalent here as they were before. But that doesn't mean that there isn't anything to talk about with Deltarune AUs. In fact, I think it's important to ask... There's two major components here. For one, it's hard to come up with Deltarune AUs because of the incompleteness of Deltarune as a game. When it came to Undertale, up to 98% of its AUs, including the one that started it all, relied on the fact that every single main character had a clear partner to be paired with. There were a couple strange ones, but people figured it out. It's harder to figure out who should be paired with who when we are constantly learning more about the dynamics between characters. In fact, there were almost no AUs after Chapter 1 came out, and those that did exist weren't very well known. So why are people making any at all? Well, let's consider a slightly different question. Undertale AUs became a thing because people really wanted more Undertale content. They finished playing Undertale and then decided that they wanted more Undertale, so much that they would make more themselves. However, unlike Undertale, we will actually get more Deltarune content. That means a lot of fan works for Deltarune are framed more like, this could be in a future chapter, rather than I made an original character that can fit into this finished game, which brings a whole new flavor to the fan content pasta of Deltarune. But Deltarune has still been tainted by the Horde. Chapter 1 of Deltarune was only an introduction, so people weren't really clamoring for more content. At least not enough to justify creating AUs. However, Chapter 2... Uh, nope. Just Spamton left people really, really wanting more. Enough to make AUs? No. But people were like, man, it was kind of wild when we made 20 billion AUs for Undertale, and that's why we have them back for Deltarune. But as I mentioned earlier, AUs like Underswap aren't as easy to make with an incomplete cast. So clearly you can't- If you want to force the magic of Undertale AUs onto Deltarune, the obvious first step was to try to do Underswap again. Underswap basically took pairs of characters and then swapped their roles. Delta Swap, on the other hand, is just far too... unfocused. When it came to Underswap, it was created by one person, Popcorn Prince on Tumblr. It was ultimately just their decision on what Underswap was about. Occasionally, other people suggested some ideas, but it was never really considered canon unless Popcorn Prince approved. Later on, Popcorn Prince left the community, leaving Underswap mostly in the hands of the people. But there was at least a unified foundation to work from. Delta Swap, however, is just a collective idea of everyone who remembers Underswap. There wasn't one person deciding what characters should switch. As such, almost every idea for swapping characters has been tucked in the net of Delta Swap. But these all would have been separate AUs in Undertale. What this means, though, is that there's a lot more Delta Swap music than any other AU so far. I've seen two different attempts at a full game OST, both of which conflict in their swaps. And I've seen a fair bit of loose songs being thrown about that are quite good. Unfortunately, you don't see very many attempts at the same idea. Underswap was not made with music at the forefront. It was made with the concept of the story, so tons of different people were able to try their hands at making Underswap music off of the same base concept. The variety born out of the same foundation was one of my favorite parts of Underswap music. But almost every Delta Swap version is created by a musician who just wanted to make music for their own version of Delta Swap. Occasionally, the swaps overlap, but the way that they're characterized will still be dramatically different. This means that there are plenty of ideas that I'd love to see more of, but have only been explored by one person who made the idea. There's some common ideas, like swapping Chris with Susie, Noelle with Birdly, and then each chapter's main boss with their secret boss, and this probably makes the most sense at the moment. I think each chapter is GUARANTEED to probably have one main boss and one secret boss. But if we don't continue to get pairs of lightners each chapter, then it will become much harder. 
Other interpretations swap lightners and darkners, which sounds very, very interesting, but I haven't seen it anywhere outside of this random fandom wiki article that I don't think is super correct. However, the problem they all eventually run into is the unsolvable mystery of Rase smoking a big doof. What do we do? That's probably what they were thinking. On the surface, Ralse seems to just be on his own, much like Flowey in Undertale. One common solution was to swap Ralse with Lancer, which certainly makes more sense than what Underswap did. In Chapter 1, Lancer serves as the direct antagonist to Ralse at several points, and in Chapter 2, Lancer is one of the few Darkners to continue having relevance from Chapter 1. There's some other options that could work fine, but most Rouse swaps don't seem as fitting when you consider the greater importance of Rouse as a character, so probably the best option is to say, screw Rouse, let's replace them completely with someone that serves the same general concept, like making Rouse a strange off-brand representation of Des for Noel, since he's normally a strange off-brand representation of Asriel for Chris. But I won't lie, there's not really any version of Delta Swap I've seen around that I absolutely love, and unless everyone suddenly agrees on one set of swaps, I don't think there ever will be. But the main issue is that the idea of Delta Swap is being forced to happen. So what about... Yo buddy, that's me! The other puppets started from the comparison between Chris and Spamton, both being puppets on a string, and then it swapped them. However, they didn't try to swap every single character in the game. The idea didn't actually expand to many other characters at all. It swapped Jevil and Susie, it swapped Noel and Jam, and then it just replaced Rouse with a brand new character named Din Soda? Taking the same screw Rouse approach and making him an off brand Addison for Spampton. As a base concept, I love the idea of swapping party members with secret bosses. Personally, I think swapping Noel and Spampton would make more sense, but that doesn't really matter because that's not the point of this AU, and I like this AU quite a lot as is. I think the personalities and dynamics of all the characters are done really well and definitely uniquely different from base Delta Rune. Chris being the little internet troll Muppet is probably my favorite part. Unfortunately, I think Susie is the weakest part, but she's also the least developed, so that makes sense. But come on guys, let's address the important thing here. The bangers! There's only one. Alright, obviously there's a lot of songs based on it that are good, but Giga Pudding, which is Chris's version of Big Shot, is definitely people's favorite. And I'll be fair, it's good. The what I assume to be official SoundCloud for this AU has mostly only done atmospheric tracks at this point, which I'm fine with, but I'm not gonna call a banger. I also haven't seen much for any of the other characters. There's a few here and there, but not nearly as much as Chris has gotten. Quite a shame, because I feel like there's a lot of musical promise here. I mean, the other puppet was started by one person on Tumblr who had the concept in mind separate from the music, just like Underswap. Obviously, that means it have great music. Clearly, I'm on to something. So what about- huh. Huh? We interrupt this title card to bring you breaking news. YouTuber The Winterer, most well known for being good at art, has made a Deltarune AU that swaps Chapter 1 Darkners with Chapter 2 Darkners. Officials did a thorough investigation, and this is what they found. Chapter rewritten is just like the other puppet. It's created by one person who isn't the one doing the music, it completely disregards the fact that more Deltarune content will come later, and it's really good. Unfortunately, it doesn't really leave itself open for a ton of musical interpretation. There's a very specific set of canon songs that are being made with direct input from the winter, but it still manages to work really well as an AU because it's a simple, solid idea. So far, we haven't seen all the changes this AU might make, but we have seen a lot more detail from the changes already revealed. That might change soon, as we've seen pretty much every major story beat of the two secret bosses, but overall, Chapter Rewritten is doing great in the story department. The music is amazing too, don't get me wrong. My pattern recognition software enjoys the fact that the Big Shot for this AU follows the tradition of almost every other AU Big Shot released thus far. Spamton Neo references Metaton Neo in both design and music, so any swap with Spamton has to reference Undyne the Undying. But seeing so much focus on developing the story aspects of an AU is pretty rare for an AU that's hot off the presses. This and the other puppet make me really excited for the future of Deltarune AUs.
Uh, speaking of segues... No. There are a ton more various Deltarune AUs I could talk about, but I already spent all my discussing something I don't really care about energy on the Delta Swap section. And the most exciting part of Deltarune's fan content to me, especially with music, is the parts that aren't strictly AUs. Undertale already did that plenty. Deltarune is different. It gets AUs that aren't AUs yet. In Chapter 1 of Deltarune, the secret boss Jevil says, Listen up, you dirty pipe cleaners. Chapter 2's final boss is going to be a queen. So then, when Chapter 2 of Deltarune released, people noticed that the secret boss spammed and said, Listen up! Chapter 3's final fight is going to be... Mike. And it was off to the races. Everyone was so convinced that the next big boss of Chapter 3 was going to be a TV-headed show host named Mike! I can't really say if that's true anymore, especially with... But that hasn't stopped some big Mike? tunes from coming in. The most obvious one being... Coming packaged with the whole fan game, too. Now I have a few personal issues with how this version of mine seems to have a lot more very blatant links to Spampton, both in design and in music. I feel like Toby Fox wouldn't reference a secret boss so directly in what would be the main boss of Chapter 3, but I know that's an unnecessary nitpick. I don't actually hold that against the song. Life track is pretty great, but honestly, my favorite Mike songs are the ones that aren't even battle themes, and don't reference Bampton at all. They're usually just good, jazzy tunes, and truthfully, they have no reason to be connected to Deltarune. They're just fully original songs at this point. I also like a lot more of the recent... Tenna character designs for the same reasons. This was my favorite part of Undertale AUs, when it got to the point that people were making essentially completely original works just inspired by Undertale. But enough about that cynical pyro. What about the secret boss of Chapter 3? Well, it's really quite simple. It's Flowey. A lot of people have latched on to the fact that the secret boss seems to be what is often discarded in whatever theme the chapter is going for, and then they realized, guys, Toriel throws away the flowers she gets from Asgore. So the flowers were discarded, which means they could be the secret boss, they'd be living flowers, so it's an obvious chance to reference Flowey. Typically, when people make hypothetical boss themes for this, it references Flowey's music a lot, which makes sense. And some of them also have battle against a true hero. Again, because Bampton did the Power of Neo reference. The problem this time is one. this is already a massive reference to Flowey. And two. Jevil didn't reference Undertale at all, it's not an established precedent. But besides that issue, I think the base idea that the flowers are the discarded element of the Dark World is dubious, to say the least. It's not impossible, but it feels like the bosses are based on the general theme of the Dark World rather than the specific location where the Dark World is. That's why some people decided that flowers are cringe and went for a radio, focusing more on what would be discarded from the general theme of TV, since, as we know, TV pretty much killed the radio star. Or what about a camera type that's now obsolete? Or literally anything. I mean, hey, while we're at it, why limit ourselves at all? Sure, we can make music based on what we already know about Chapter 3, but the possibilities outside of that are endless, so...
and that's just the teensiest, tiniest little section of the true breadth of amazing songs out there. Having so much fan content dedicated to essentially just predicting the future content of the game makes Deltarune incredibly unique compared to... well, compared to the small amount of games I know well enough to compare it to. It's sadly a type of fan content that won't be there forever, there's only so many chapters to predict before they're all released officially, and the moment a chapter is released, all fan designs and songs based on it will likely be forgotten for the most part. But there's also a decent chance that Deltarune will instead just grow a large culture of fan-made Darkners once the game is out. Having Darkner OCs will probably tip Deltarune back into the cringe territory, but I don't mind. You think with the type of games I'm covering on this channel that I care about something being cringe? The fan content's great, and that's all I care about. I want to specifically call out a user named RV Pine on SoundCloud. They were making hypothetical songs for chapters 3, 4, and 5, and they were so good at it that people thought either the game had somehow been leaked, or they were literally Toby Fox. Which, obviously, this can't be Toby Fox. He has an official SoundCloud, which a ton of people have clearly... Huh. Well, besides the Undertale soundtrack, the Deltarune songs have enough listens that people would know about this account. Not to mention the hurdle of why would Toby Fox release tons of big spoilers for Deltarune exclusively to SoundCloud. He does some wacky things, but spoil an upcoming secret boss theme wouldn't be one of them. In all fairness, this account was originally a lot more suspicious looking. It was named Yuzi Inu, had Toby's Twitter profile picture, the presentation of the account and tracks were intentionally made to look like an official soundtrack, and the tracks emulated Toby's style incredibly well. Although the actual intention wasn't to trick people into thinking this was Toby Fox, because like, come on, if Toby Fox was trying to do a secret account, you'd think he'd be a little more subtle. But people were hyped for Deltarune and still felt deceived in the end. So the account got a slight overhaul to mostly drop the theming to avoid confusing people in the future. But I'm glad I missed out on you know, the whole thinking this is actually Toby Fox and then being mad after finding out it isn't. Thing. Because now I just get to come in and enjoy these incredible tracks. Oddly, what I appreciate most here is how committed Pine was to making a believable soundtrack. They did what very few fan song creators do. They made boring songs. Now that might sound confusing, but I mean like... They made entirely atmospheric tracks that work great in-game but aren't exciting as a standalone thing. A nice simple battle theme that isn't three minutes long with 15 lay motifs shoved into it. A literal 20 second cutscene track. These aren't Big Shot or Killer Queen. They aren't as exciting to work on. But the fact that RV Pine actually made these types of songs is what made this so convincing as a real soundtrack too convincing, but again, I didn't get duped here, so I just get to appreciate the effort. And I really hope that these types of fan songs don't disappear when the full game comes out, or maybe people just start making new songs for already existing chapters. I mean, there's already... an entire subsection for one basic idea. What if the weird root fight against Spamped and Neo had a different battle theme? This reminds me of Undertale's neutral root Megalovania idea, which was like, what if Sand still fought you during a neutral run? Like, it isn't a whole separate AU, just a single idea for something that could still exist within the normal game. Now, as an excuse to make a more dramatic version of Big Shot, it's fine. But obviously, I gotta overanalyze the logistics of it. The reason you're fighting Spamton at the end of a weird route isn't that different from a normal route. Spamton isn't suddenly the final judge of your sins, San style. He isn't suddenly trying to be a hero. He's trying to stop you because you are now impeding on his plans to attain freedom and power. You are the last hurdle stopping Spamton from becoming free, which is the same context of the fight normally. So why would his battle theme be different? But obviously people just want some fun, so it's fine. I can overanalyze the game design angle of this music existing all I want, but a good song's a good song, and there are some really good songs coming from this. However, Dead Ringer is the closest anyone's ever gotten to making me feel like we missed out on something amazing by not getting a Snowgrave version of Big Shot. I really love the use of more Undertale lay motifs in Dead Ringer, as that's what really caught me off guard the first time I heard Big Shot myself. But surprisingly, what I love the most here is the use of other Deltarune lay motifs. Like, don't forget, right about here. Or Girl Next Door, at this part here. 
Recontextualizing these chill songs into something so much more intense worked insanely well. I genuinely hope that we get something similar to the Don't Forget section in an official Deltarune song later. Probably a Chapter 7 thing. It feels perfect for a climactic final boss song of some sort. But now that I've pretty much completely shifted away from Deltarune AUs, I also wanted to quickly touch on... Turn around, kid. This is something I've seen way more for Deltarune than I ever did for Undertale. People aren't just blending up Toby Fox's songs into new combined forms. They're making new, original compositions for... Spamton. It's just Spamton. The big three examples are Jackpot, Want Some Fun, and Ad Infinitum. These are all amazing songs, but there's tons of original songs all themed around Spamton's wacky antics. However, this is only for a post-Chapter 2 world. When Chapter 1 came out, there were a lot of original songs just based around the game in general, around topics that Deltarune was seemingly bringing up in Chapter 1. It was rare to see a song about a specific character or plot point. Spamton remains the only character I've seen specific music written for so commonly. It certainly helps that he's fully fleshed out and, as far as we know, completed. Unlike almost every other part of the game. But if we're patient enough, we'll get to the end eventually. Just like this vid- Wait! I'm a YouTuber doing a Deltarune video! I have to use the funny Spamton moment! Uh... Here.